Welcome back, Peter Bookvar. To be here. Great Thanks to, for having me again. Yeah, great to catch up with you, Peter. So, um, you know, I want to talk about what's top of mind for you uh, this week in, you know, different markets. Uh, you know, I know this, your interview the other day on CNBC, and they were asking you uh, about, you know, whether or not you thought this uh, rally would had legs and you, you said you think it does, but um, afterwards that we're going to make much lower lows. Um, but, you know, what I'd like to talk about is um, what's really on your mind as far as uh, what's happened with central banking, uh, the intervention, uh, the fact that uh, uh, no, there's no, there is no cooperation anymore between central banks, is there, Peter? It's every central bank for himself. Because why it's, aren't we helping the Japanese here? Well, it, it's typically every central bank for themselves. It's only on a rare occasion uh, is there something done together. But why should there be something done together? Um, I think, the, and regardless, all the all well, these central I mean, banks. Hasn't the dollar been, you know, so called in all the financial press, the wrecking ball? And I, I mean, you know, it's not above the Fed to be uh, an interventionist. I mean, they've been doing it uh, for decades in different ways. Uh, why not um, try and break the momentum of the wrecking ball? and turn it into something that maybe takes a break for a few months and well uh, if, if the japanese were interested in stemming the weakness in the yen then all kuroda has to do is widen yield cor curve control okay. uh, i mean it's as simple as that if the 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 brits were serious about strength strengthening the pound the bank of england wouldn't be pussyfooting with 50 basis point rate hikes they would do 75 just as we are if the euro, if the Europeans were serious about strengthening the euro, well, they have their benchmark rate at seventy-five basis points when inflation's at ten percent. So all these central okay. banks are doing it to themselves. So to think that we need to do coordination here, um, these central banks need to help themselves. They are in their control of strengthening their own currencies. So it's a, a coming upon them if they choose to uh, to to. To, to be a little more active on the monetary side, because okay, so at the end of the day, that's what this is. To me, so this is there's just never an a case for thing. intervention. There's never a case for intervention. On, on the previous twos, the Louvre, the, the Plaza, um, you know, I'm sure there were uh, different countries that weren't really carrying the, you know, the big wood by uh, using rates. Um, but then if we intervene, then the ECB, the BOJ, they're getting off easy. You know, that the BOJ okay. is sticking to their zero rate policy. But we're um, sending credit insane. swaps. We're sending credit swaps to credit to credit Swiss. The Fed is already trying to backstop what could be a problem. Why not just try and address the problem so they're not the lender of last resort for everybody? I, I just don't know what can be done. I mean, if you were in the seat, what, 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 would, what would we do? What kind of an agreement would it look like that would get the dollar to weaken? I don't know. Sell dollars. Yeah, but you know that'll have a fleeting impact, just as any intervention does. It, if it was coordinated, it may not, especially with its crowd. We, we, saw, we saw coordinated rate cuts in 08 and 09. It's, it has a yeah. fleeting impact. You, you need okay. something more substantial. You need the bank. Okay. The yen is not going to rally until Corona backs off from yield curve control. You can intervene as much as you want and you can buy as much yen, but the rally's not gonna last until they get off yield curve control. The Euro rally's not gonna last until we see what the winter looks like in Europe and yeah. the European Central Bank uh, starts hiking rates notably, which I think they're about to. They're about to start raising by 75. The Bank of England's likely going to raise by 75, but look at the currencies of countries that have been aggressive. Look at the Mexican peso. Look in the Brazilian yeah. real. Should, did we need yeah, to intervene Yeah, they've been holding up better no, than the G. because their You're central right. banks have been more aggressive. We didn't need to intervene. Look at the Canadian dollar. It's actually hung in pretty well because the Bank of Canada has gotten more aggressive. So all these countries, we, we know the answer. It's just let's catch up a little bit to your monetary tightening. It's not any more complicated than that. 
Okay, I, you finally, you know, I'm not going to waste any more time putting out that idea because you finally convinced me that. I mean, uh, just again, really look at no the Mex point. look at the chart of the Mexican peso. They started hiking in 2021. The Brazilian real, the, the, the central bank there started hiking in 2021. Their, their currencies are not are not tanking here with everybody else because of of, of they were more aggressive because they know uh, what inflation looks like and they have experience in dealing with it. In fact, uh, yeah, the peso, if the dollar ever did turn down, would really appreciate. So, yeah, here you go. You're talking about this long-term picture, and the peso's not up here. Trade's it's great. Down here. Who would have thunk? A country yeah. run by a socialist. Currency yeah. trade's great. Well, that's because so it's all about rate. it's all about rates. Then. That's what I think it is. Okay, so then... Uh, uh, how can can we hold out hope that eventually there'll be money flow into precious metals without a weaker dollar? And they sure look like they want new lows here. I I, I think in in I'm gold, long. yeah, I'm gold long. So as I am, gold yeah. as crappy as it's traded last couple of years. Yeah. Um, in the face of this year, a very sharp rise in rates and pretty strong dollar, one of the more epic dollar rallies that we've ever yeah. seen, you know, gold is not down that much. So to me, gold is just a coiled spring looking for some reason to rally. Now, of course, the rate move too is, is not helping. Um, I, I was hopeful that uh, at least the pound would have gotten some support from Liz Truss and I'm actually, I think, one of the only few defenders of the policy that she tried to implement. Um, but I think pound, the, the, pound looks like it has bottom. I, I think mean, it has. Pull, I think it has. Right? We're long. We I could pull back, right? I mean, okay. but the lows are most likely in. This uh, right. looks climactic to me. How about it does. you? does. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, in a couple of weeks, the BOE will probably hike to 75. The ECB is okay. going to hike 75. So these other central banks are beginning to catch up um, to the Fed. Uh, I think once the Fed funds rate gets to 4% plus, which it'll get within you know, the next meeting and then it'll take above that in December, I wouldn't be surprised if December hike is gonna be the last hike in this cycle. So we're coming to the tail end of the Fed hikes, other central banks that are catching up. And um, you know, yeah. as, as the months go on, we're getting closer to the end of Corota's term. And uh, I think whoever, replaces Corota, you know, opens up the possibility that uh, they pivot from the curve control. Can I ask you if you think that what's happened in uh, the UK, um, the guilt chart really doesn't look that much different than our treasury chart, does it? Except for maybe that one day where there was more panic, they look almost identical. And, and do you think that if there's problems with pension funds in the UK, I was always taught they kind of lead, look for to the UK for what could happen here. As uh, Do you think that we may have the same problem with pension funds here that because of financial repression went out and had schemes going like they did in the UK and they're really not whole anymore? I, I do not think we have the same issue with pension funds here. Okay. But we do have we do have the same issue with 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 uh, bonds sovereign and debt. treasuries. Sovereign okay. debt is where the bubble was. Sovereign debt is where the bubble is now unwinding, and we're all in the same bubble boat together that has leaks in it. So okay. what the, the the day that uh, we had that event, or or the days leading into that that guilt uh, implosion. Yes. Yeah. I said, this is coming to a theater near you in the U.S. And okay. um, I, I think now that the tenure is broken above four, you know, we're in, in entering some uncharted territory in the sense that you know, I, I get people all the time tell me, oh, you got to buy long-term treasuries because U.S. growth is slowing and inflation has topped. And, and it's such an attractive I, I, been, yield now. Yeah, and right? I've been saying for a while that you can't just analyze the U.S. treasury market and look at and, and think about your expectations for growth and inflation here. I said, you have to pay attention to what's going on in European bonds and in, in Japanese bonds. You know, that's where the bubble really took place with, with negative interest rates. 
So right, we're all in this right. bed together, and um, you know you can see higher rates and a slow economy, and um, that's why I'm much more comfortable owning the short end of the yield curve um, because I again I don't think the Fed after getting above four is going to have much left. To me, that's much more attractive. Where the longer end, you have all these big. Um, so the inversion like said, will go away. The inversion will go away, and we'll start steepening. Um, well, it, I don't necessarily, it, well, if it does, then, you know, we got some real big problems because that means the 10 year is going above four and a half percent. Um, and, and, and not for, not because growth is slowing, uh, I, or, or I should because say not because inflation's accelerating. No, because, because of, 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 again, this bond unwind that's going on around the world. Okay. And who, who is the, on the other side of QT? Who's buying them? Well, it's interesting. We had uh, the August tick data that came out last night, and uh, you had massive buying out of the UK, but that can be anybody around the world because you can just tap into a UK bank. You know, you can be a, the Chinese or, or you can be the, the, the Saudi. You can be wherever. You just tap into a UK bank who buys US treasuries, and it shows up under the UK. So UK and Cayman Islands were the two <laughs> biggest buyers. So... Okay. Um, and interestingly, we did get some buying from uh, notes and bonds from the Chinese and the yeah. Japanese, but that's only after many, many months of selling. And the Japanese seem to have let a lot of T-bills mature that they were not reinvested. So the big holders of U.S. Treasuries continue to shrink their pile, but hedge funds through the Caymans continue to be big buyers. And God knows who was buying through the U.K. banks. Uh, but yeah, the okay. Fed is essentially selling through QT. And also banks are, are owning less uh, treasuries and agency bonds as they are losing deposits to money market funds. Right. Right. Okay. Um, any feeling just as, uh, you know, a citizen of the U.S. about the drawdown of the SPR um, to really, you know, dangerous levels? You think it could be a good trade to fade Joe Biden on its energy policy and every time they do a release like this recent release because of the Saudis um, cutting production that it's a nice uh, counter trend. It's a nice fade. You know, Kramer's not the only guy to fade. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's energy, it's just a bum rap. I've, I've nicknamed the SPR, the strategic political reserve now. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right just before the election, just yeah. imagine if we actually have some serious and real Supply constraints, supply yeah. constraints, just imagine. And and here's a guy who just drained it because he wanted to lower the price and get reelected, even though draining it further disincentivizes supply. And it disincentivizes the supply out of OPEC, it disincentivizes the supply at home. And why should we drill more when our government is, is purposely trying to reduce the price? Um, yeah. So it, it is. You worry so about it too. Political. I mean, yeah. this is not just, okay, let's talk about the political games. Like I say, just imagine if we have a legitimate supply problem and you physically couldn't get access to barrels of oil and we had well, people we'll, in Washington we'll have to do what the decided Japanese to did. the price. It's scary. We'll have to do what the Japanese did when they couldn't get oil. Right? And turn on I the mean, nukes. Well, you know, some type of, uh, you know, we'll have to go take some. So, uh, uh, I wanted to ask you if there were any other groups you were following. Uh, you're still basically an inflationista, right, Peter? Are there anything? I mean, good, good, goods prices, goods prices are, are softening now. Okay. Uh, so the goods price inflation story is pretty much over uh, in terms of, of the extent of its rate of change. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see to what extent it moderates. Uh, the service uh, acceleration continues, but a lot of that has to do with rents that are slow in capturing reality, but in reality, rent growth, which is still pretty robust, that rate of change is moderating. So um, if, if the services component of CPI was more real time, then um, you know, we'd see further slowing in inflation. My yeah, I think issue, I was, oh, go ahead, Peter. My, my, my thing is, is that uh, inflation is gonna fall, but it's gonna settle out uh, well above the one to 2% range that we became accustomed to for decades pre-COVID. So we're gonna settle into a higher 
structural inflation story, much less than where we are today, but maybe three to four percent instead of one to two percent. I was uh, really wanted to ask you about uh, the commodity markets, and uh, uh, I know you you like the metals. Uh, any other groups? Uh, is this commodity bull market over? Uh, anything in uranium that you like, or? Uh, so we've been bullish on uranium for years and okay, so uh, the last couple of years on energy as well and remain that way. And I want to get bullish on copper, but I'm still trying to balance the, the demand challenge in a slowing economy with still longer term supply issues that um, will lead to eventual higher copper prices, but I'm just not yeah. sure when. Yeah, the, the whites go first. So it'd be platinum, silver, palladium. The whites lead. Anyway, the white metals. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, like silver seems to be trying to dig in. Um, I'm looking it, for one it more It's beginning low. to outperform. I don't know. I think we might have seen it. It's beginning to really outperform. Right gold. here? Yeah, uh, down here. Uh, to right me, it's, it's so looking very margin. reverse head and shoulders. Okay. It could be. You know, I, I, I would gladly... Uh, not want to have to live through this. I'm just saying I'm prepped to buy more should it occur. Yeah, it could. I, to me, I'm it's looking reverse. Silver shares. Yeah. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, they've actually outperformed, the silver shares have outperformed. Uh, look how much stronger you see the pullback here in silver. I didn't like the action last week, but a couple of the shares, look, there's hardly any give back in Endeavor. Or, uh, this one I own too, Fortuna. They yeah, I hope that's, uh, to me. hope that's a, a precursor. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, they're the, coiled they springs. They just need a break. Yeah, yeah. They, they should. And um, and I, I think if, if we can get through uh, a, a winter uh, with no further excel, uh, tensions in the war and that Europeans don't freeze and that their storage levels are manageable and you know, maybe that, that helps the euro. And like I said, the ECB is going to hike by 75 next right. meeting be a week so show. you agree that we really um, do need a weaker dollar um yeah to, i mean that that's that's it's i mean can the dollar and gold been, rally at the same in, time yes but yeah, i think right yeah. now we need a weaker dollar all right and uh you know because uh gold and yen terms it's been a huge winner right it's just here in the dollar if you owned uh gold and you were in yen uh gold appreciated quite a bit that's correct. In, right. Yes. So we need we need a weaker dollar to have a bull market here in the U.S. So you agree with that? Ever dabble yeah. in the grains, Peter? And you know, yeah. I worry about what's happening in um, Ukraine. That if I do. You, it, yeah. Yeah. No, we we had owned the fertilizers, and okay. um, for the last couple of years, and actually sold them into the spike after the invasion. Um, I was worried about the demand destruction side of the spike in fertilizer prices. But okay. I, I do think that um, ag is, will remain in a bull market. And um, yeah. it's just, I'm, I haven't, now that the we're not in, I, the ag, they, in the firts, uh, I probably I don't own, know, on the ags instead directly. Okay, because uh, I don't know anyone that went on a diet during a Fed tightening ca campaign. Yeah, They're I mean, that's leading. the thing. Well, that's the thing with ag is that the demand side is pretty linear. Uh, upward move. It's the supply side is that's always tough to figure out, and supply side's definitely crimped. So I'd rather be owning the the, the, the crops, the row crops directly, and um, okay. fertilizer. I think is still dealing with again the demand destruction side. So um, it's probably just easier to buy corn and wheat, I guess, or soybeans. I'll, I'll ask you to put your Nostradamus hat on. Uh, do you have any feeling on? Uh, how this uh, war in Ukraine is uh, going to play out? And are you concerned about the buildup in uh, uh, the South China Sea and Taiwan? Um, I mean, I think with, with, with China, and um, I, I, if you want to integrate that country because you think it's part of your own, I don't know how using a military and killing people is yeah. gets you that because if you want them to be part of your country, you're going to kill your own people. I, that, that seems to me a, a, a bizarre thing, but I guess 
I guess just look at Russia and Ukraine, um, how Putin manages his way out of this box. I, I, I don't know. Um, okay. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't, uh, that's, a, I, that's a valid answer. I, I think the only thing that we can hope for is further um, figuring out how Europe can get natural gas from other places. Uh, it yeah. was a good sign that at least the Germans are keeping open their three remaining nukes uh, through the winter. And maybe that will continue on past that, even though it's only about 10 to 12 percent of their energy needs. Yeah. So um, I think so this can, inflation problem, supply driven, is not going to be solved by uh, the tool of higher rates and QT? Well, it's not, ju- it's not just supply driven. The, the government spent five trillion dollars uh, in okay. two years goosing the demand side. In the wrong things. Uh, why didn't they put give incentives to build more housing? Why didn't they give incentives to build out our in- infrastructure for natural gas, for pipelines, uh, you know, uh, give farmers incentives to grow more grain? Um, it can't be solved by a central bank, those issues, Pete. Well, it, it, it's the central bank, uh, and not just the Fed, but central banks around the world, to me, are responsible for where we are uh, that the that the, 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 the housing price yeah. explosion to the upside so they're directly yeah. to blame and yeah we can blame the supply issues and zoning issues in parts of the country but you know the fed is responsible for creating its second housing bubble within you know a short period of time and it's amazing that they were able to do it again and and why was the fed buying mbs for as long as they did and as much as they did um well, the so. housing prices went up forty percent in two years because yeah. of the Fed. So yeah. they they pushed the demand side, and housing is the biggest part of the CPI. So this is a lot more than just the supply issue. Okay, because that's what uh, the bulls are saying, and actually, they a lot of people are saying the market's holding up pretty well, considering the draconian and very persistent um, and short period of time that rates have jacked up. That They're saying totally the stock market's good. holding up? No, the housing market. Oh, the housing market. Well, the, the, the one thing that the housing, well, what's not holding up is the pace of transactions. That is falling sharply. Okay. Maybe what they're referring to is the price, price. of homes. But That's the right. price of homes could hold up because you have a lot of people that are in 3% mortgages that right. don't want to give that up. So they're not going to move and supply is going to remain constrained. Right. So the price side could hold up, but the actual transaction activity is collapsing. Yeah. Look at the okay. NAHB Home Builder Index yesterday. Yeah. It's down to 38. The break even's 50. That's not holding up. Okay. So prices holding uh, uh, again. Prices will so hold you're... up better than the, the pace of activity. But keep in mind, for every house that's not sold means that there's less paint bought to paint it. There's less yeah, carpet that... and wood flooring used right. as part of that. So yeah. housing all in is almost is between 15 and 80 percent of the U.S. economy. So prices can hang in, but if the activity story um, falls sharply, that has a dramatic GDP impact. Yeah, this is not going to be like, oh, wait, for the reason you just mentioned. Uh, uh, no. The rates that people couldn't move out and find any, uh, they'd pay twice as much for rent. If and, and in 08, the Fed cut rates down to zero, so it wasn't a mortgage rate thing. It was it was yeah. people were speculating in homes and flipping homes like there was no tomorrow. Um, it's it's much different now. Do you think that someone that doesn't own a home would have an opportunity after the cycle plays out? Or uh, I mean, I, I I hope so, but that but you need prices to fall more more than they they might. Yeah, right. Um, and that's going to take higher financing costs to do it. We, we the first time home buyer is the one who gets screwed. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, go Padres. <laughs> I'm a Yankee fan, but we'll see in the World Series. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Peter, great catching up with you. And, you too. Uh, thank, yeah, thanks for letting me uh, take you through the whole board. Uh, Peter is someone I could ask anything to. Thank you, Dale. And uh, I really appreciate it, bud. Anytime. I appreciate having me on. All right. Peter Bookfar, right, everyone. Care. Follow him at P. Bookfar on Twitter. You'll see him on CNBC all the time. And go to his site as well. Some great uh, insights there. Thanks, Dale. Okay. All right, buddy. So that's a wrap, everyone. You could join the team in 18 minutes on the Morning Edge.
Good luck and I'll see everyone tomorrow. Adios. Don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See you guys. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.